shit, Stuart. I can't believe we're actually gonna do this. I know, man. This is so nuts. It's so fucking awesome. We're gonna be celebrities, man. I'm sorry for everything that's gonna happen, Mom. You guys... You guys aren't totally bad parents. You're just so blind. Things are about to change. I'd like you to meet... Laura. She's gonna help re-educate you people. Permanently. Jesus, Richard, how am I supposed to be in two places at once? Oh, well, sorry. Look, I am not gonna miss the meeting with the CEO of IBM because you forgot to schedule a babysitter. <laughs> You know my plane leaves in an hour and a half? What, you don't have time in your busy schedule? Fine, you're paying for it. Fine! Oh, look what you did. Oh, great. It's my fault. That's me, Arnold Klein. Those are my parents in the other room, arguing about which one's gonna pop a bottle in my mouth. Neither one of them really wanted a kid. It takes away from their disposable income. It makes you wonder why they didn't exercise their right to choose. Welcome to my life. When I was young, I had that certain kind of happiness only a kid has. I was so alive. It was like I could feel my heart beating furiously inside my chest. My life was in my hands, and the whole world was mine for the taking. That was Todd Robertson who pushed me. A part of me died that day. He killed it. This was the first time I met Stuart. We have a lot in common. We've both had pretty rough childhoods. When he was little, his dad tried to set him on fire. He's grown up in and out of group homes ever since. My whole life, he's really the only one who's ever stuck up for me. Stuart and I are like brothers. I don't know what I'd do without him. All right, log on under T-800 and enter Spirit 99 as your password. How the hell you do that without a phone line? Cellular modem, 56K. Swiped it from my dad's computer. He'll be on some business trip in Tokyo or wherever the hell he goes before he figures out it's even gone. Oops! Well, well, well. If it isn't little Arnie Klein. So, dork, what did your mommy say the first time you brought home your little boyfriend here? Well, Dork! Leave him alone, Todd. Shut up. Leave him alone, Todd. Shut up. You know, I'm thinking maybe. Maybe he doesn't have a mommy. Maybe he's one of those uh test tube babies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the experiment failed. <laughs> 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 lunch. This is pathetic, Arnie. Man, we gotta do something about them. All right. I'll talk to Stoney about him. Can I help you, Arnold? Well, I've I've sort of been having a problem with another student for a while. Uh, he's 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 been bullying me, and he. Well, who is this other boy, Arnold? It was uh T Todd Robertson. He he's always pushing me around and. 
Today he bumped into me and made me drop my computer. Look, the, the screen's broken. Now, I've worked with Todd in the student government, Arnold, and he seems like a very nice boy. Perhaps he bumped into you by accident. No, he's always... Well, if it happens again, and you feel that there's still a problem, you just come by and see me anytime. Oh, well, that's what I'm here for, sweetie. Thanks. When do you think it happens? What? When do adults get so wrapped up in their own suburban cocoons that they have no concept of reality? Some counselor. That woman has no idea what kind of shit we have to deal with. It's like she wouldn't even let herself see it. My mom's the same way. Yeah, I know. Then they all worship assholes like Todd. Why? Because he can throw a fucking football? When talk radio and the financial news becomes more important than having a life, please shoot them. Well, as far as I'm concerned, all those people are extremely close to death anyway. Game over. Come on, Arnie. Look at the masses. Trapped in a suit. Sleepwalking every day to some boring-ass desk job. Now they are dying, man. Oh, fuck that. That shit ain't gonna happen to us. I ain't gonna die some slow and painful nine-to-five death. What are you gonna do? All right, class. Based on last night's reading, can anyone tell me what year World War II ended? Anybody? Who is that? Come on. If I did have a bomb, why would I keep it in my own locker? <laughs> God, it feels really good to get some revenge, Arnold. And this... This is what we gotta do. I mean, there's revolution going on all around, man. Just look at Columbine. The Columbine kids are dead, Stuart. Oh, and trying to get through every day hoping we don't run into Todd or his jock douchebag friends is living? At least they're in control of their lives. Arnie Pacific High needs a wake-up call. Something to really open people's eyes about what's really going on in this fucking place. Think about American history yesterday. Our founding fathers said, fuck the system. They did what they thought was right, and they reached the masses. Yeah, at first they were rebels and outcasts. Like us. Until they succeeded. Then all of a sudden, they're heroes and legends. Shit, man, this country wouldn't even exist if they had worked within the system. When's the next assembly? Wednesday, I think. Oh. Hell no, Stuart. Forget Arnie, it. I'm... Come on, Stuart. Arnie. We take over the assembly, man, and we make people understand. Take over as in terrorism? Holy shit, Stuart. You want to talk about American history? This country was founded because people wanted their freedom. There's not a whole lot of freedom in a 5 by 10 foot jail cell. Oh, God. You are such a fucking pussy, Arnold. Stuart, I... I'm just saying that we should consider the consequences. God damn it, Arnold. No one is gonna get hurt. We'll go in firing blanks. Firing as in guns? I believe in you, Arnie. Come on, man. We need this. We need to do this, man. Fine. You want to go on living your pathetic, insignificant life? Fine. Stuart. <laughs> oh, 
did you and your widow girlfriend have a tip? Poor baby! Hey, he looks like he's down in the dumps, doesn't he? Oh, shit, Barney. Come on, come on. In the can. In the can, he go. Yeah, boy. That's what you get. Go, Tigers! Bang, boy. Fucking loser. Let's fucking do it. Sorry for this inconvenience, but, uh, but don't worry, we're, we're not going to hurt. We're not going to hurt anyone. We're tired of the way this fucking place is run. And we're not going to take it anymore. Welcome to the revolution, people. Just in, troubled teens have once again lashed out at society. Only Channel 6 has this exclusive, unbelievable report. Join us for this story of young lives in peril, of youth gone bad, of a generation lost. Ladies and gentlemen, this shocking story just in. We are getting preliminary reports that two armed teenage boys have violently overthrown the auditorium at Pacific High School in... <laughs> this is just the latest chapter in an ugly story of school-related violence. Barbara, do we have any word on what caused the perpetrators to snap like this? I mean, do they have a history of violence or is religion a part of this? That's a good question, Brad. We shouldn't rule out some kind of cult involvement. There are just so many potential factors. It could even be related to their parents. Folks, we have just received pictures of these troubled youths. Can we show these to our viewers? Oh, man, I hate that picture. And Generation Lost, what a stupid fucking name. This is the first time in my life I haven't felt lost. See? Celebrities. Makes you wonder how those idiots can have so much influence over millions of people. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Let's make those idiots work for us for a change. This is Arnold Klein. I'm holding the auditorium at Pacific High. I will exchange one hostage for a news crew with a live satellite link. Have them at the north door. Have them there in exactly ten minutes, or I will shoot one hostage in the face for every minute that they are late, starting with Becky James, Ralph Anderson, and Jim Clark.
go get the projection ready. Stewart. Kelly Brock, Channel 6. Look, Kelly, we're not going to hurt anyone. We're, we're doing... We're, we're doing this for a reason. So I'm going to get up on stage and make a speech. And I want you to broadcast it live on the news. You, you can do that, right? Two networks, 136 affiliates. Cool. So, uh... Point, point to me when you're ready. Okay. This is Kelly Brock, Channel 6 News, reporting live from within the auditorium at Pacific High School, where two students have launched an all-out war against the school. We have agreed to broadcast their demands in exchange for the release of two hostages. Perhaps we can curb any further violence by letting these troubled teens speak their minds. Maybe we can prevent another Columbine. The distraught young child behind me is known only as Arnold. Let's hear what he has to say. Celebrities. Well, this is a change. Yesterday, no one hardly knew I was alive. And now no one can take their eyes off me. Well, we're here because we're tired of the way we've been treated our whole lives. I'm tired of following rules made by adults who don't have a clue what my life is like. Do you know what it feels like to have to go to school every day and be scared? When I'm sitting in the car on the ride to school in the morning, do you know what I'm thinking? Not about the test I have in English or if that cute girl in math class might talk to me. Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm wondering if I'm going to have to change into that spare shirt I keep in my locker because Todd Robertson might dump me in the trash or spill his drink on me or, or shove me in the mud. And you know why I got to deal with this? Because I think for myself. I dress the way I want to dress. Because I'd rather move a chess piece than tackle another guy. And for this, I've been an outcast ever since I was a little kid. What do you say we meet this big bully, eh? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the source of my anguish, the guy who's made my life a living hell. It's Todd Robertson. Up here. Now. Oh. It's okay, Todd. Come on. Take it off. You remember when we were five years old, playing on the merry-go-round? You pushed me off, and I got a face full of sand. That was when I learned what it feels like. What it feels like to be humiliated, harassed, laughed at, made fun of. Now you're going to feel it, too. Strip. What? You fucking heard me. Strip. In case you haven't noticed, Todd, I'm the one with the fucking gun here. Now do it! All the 
away, Todd. Now you're gonna feel what it's like to be the victim. Barbara, you're on. Ladies and gentlemen, we are as shocked and horrified as you must be right now. Barbara, we've just talked to some people who know young Arnold, the troubled youth we just witnessed on stage. Can we roll this? I don't know what's wrong with that boy. I did everything a parent was supposed to do. God, he had such an easy life. I... Every time he wanted a new toy, I just... I gave him everything he wanted. what else I was supposed to do. Dude, everybody here is like family. Yeah, there's popular people and cliques and stuff. But that's everywhere. Me and Todd were always nice to him. We never did any of that stuff he was saying. He probably just wants to be part of the in-crowd and he's not. The way the guy dresses. He's a weirdo. Always has been, always will be. Go Tigers! Get the structure out of this misery! Uh, what the hell are you doing, Stuart? This is not part of the plan. Plan? What was the plan? To make some retarded two-minute speech and then go rot in jail? Come on, honey. Let's make this really mean something. It does mean something. It, it means... Nobody moves! Anybody goes out that goddamn door, I blow their fucking head off! what you've just done! Well, how the hell did you get real bullets? Hey man, I am just trying to make things better for us. And it starts with teaching people that don't respect us! Teaching? This is killing! This thing is over. This thing is over! Leave. Not you, motherfucker. Arnie! Come on! It's still going to fight each other! Let's join together, man, and kill all these fuckers starting with this piece of shit! Fine! You want a statement? I'll show you a fucking statement! Fuck! Put it down, Stuart. I've always been there for you, Arnold. Think about what's really happening here, man. about this for years! Kill the fucker! You'll thank me when this is over. Come on, Arnie. Brothers. Remember? We're not brothers. 
I guess you would think I'd regret this for the rest of my life. But I don't. You see, before all this, a part of me was dying. I try to think back to when I was young and remember how I felt. I remember being so excited about life. My heart would beat wildly. I wanted to know everything, to do everything. To take my life in my hands and hold it above the crowd and scream, this is mine, and I'm gonna use it for all it's worth. But somewhere I started to suffocate and I lost that careless happiness. Maybe it was Todd. Maybe it was society. <sighs> Who knows? Stuart and I once talked about how we would be heroes and legends and get our message out to the masses. The thing is, I've learned that life isn't about other people. It's about you. People can only treat you the way you let them treat you. They can only bring you down if you let them. I know that lives were lost. And I'm truly sorry for that. But I also know that a life was saved. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Does your life mean? 